What is up, people? I am here. My sound is on. We're back. Last time we discussed 7.23. Now we're up to 7.23a already. Very quick release. The reason why is because a lot of problems needed to be addressed. I was just making sure I did everything on my end over there. It looks like I'm pretty good. Um, I anyway, I didn't do actually, I didn't make sure my bot was functional the way that I wanted it to be. Um, that's better. Bot's doing what it's supposed to do. Da 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 da. Uh, da da. Making sure. Cool. A lot of stuff. I'm trying to get it all up and running again. Um, it'll all catch up. So, basically, uh, we're going to go over this patch. We're going to stop the stream, then restart as a normal stream. It, it might be a little late for the normal stream aspect because this might take more than 15 minutes because it's actually, uh, you know, a good amount of changes. But it's not ridiculous. Nothing like the actual main patch. So, neutral drops are now only three items per tier rather than having a chance to get more if you like really like grind a jungle neutral drops no longer have an end period time in addition to that just a start period meaning that those um little things from the last patch where it's like oh five to fifteen is tier one items <laughs> now five to fifteen you'll only have a chance for tier one items at 15 to 25 you have primarily a chance for tier two items but also could get those tier one items that you missed and they'll stay there for the rest of the game now eventually you'll uh, exhaust that Assumably, after enough jungle camps, you will get all the tier 1 items and all the ones that are prior to the tier you're at. But it's just a way to catch up in case you miss them. Since there's only three per tier, they don't want you to miss out on potential items. This still keeps the RNG, though, because you could get crappy items. Uh, the neutral drop rate changed so that they are less common to start. But then the halving mechanic, it's not half anymore. It starts to subtract by three, I think. But eventually, that's got to go to... Oh, yeah, because there's only three. So since it's three guaranteed, uh, it's actually easier to get them. Because before, the chances of getting three items were... Um, what? It's... To get three items, it's it's weird the way it works. It's like a, it's a much smaller number than 2.5. But now, it's a little bit easier is the point. So you're much more likely to get them quicker. Um, so, Iron Town. Cooldown increased. Because I guess it was strong. I, I wouldn't know I didn't use it, but... Okay. Ocean Heart, I guess they nerfed the health and mana regen, and they buffed the stats. So it's a better stat item, less for the water regen aspect. Keen Optics mana regen went down a little bit. Um, this is one of the worst items, in my opinion, in the entire like thing, so I don't get it. Repair Kit was moved from Tier 2 to Tier 3 because it's a very strong item for stopping pushing. Helm of the Undying was moved from Tier to 3. They removed Tome of Aghanim entirely. It's the only item I think was removed entirely. Uh, I think it just created a weird mechanic in, like, oftentimes you'd have a, a team lineup where it wasn't even relevant. You're like, wow, like, that sucks, especially considering two heroes now. I guess they must not consider this. The two new heroes don't have an Aghanim's upgrade, so it's like two heroes might not even be able to use it. Imclaw, the crit's lower, but the damage is higher. Vambrace was moved up to tier two because... Up meaning, like, because since it starts one, two, three, four, but... Um, because it's not that good. Uh, the stats were lowered to adjust for just the components, so there's no bonus for having it. It's just a way to combine them for slot efficiency. That's still good, though, and it's better that it, it happens earlier. And the reason why is uh, you look at... You know, there we go. Making sure stuff is going well. Um, you look at... When you get the Van Brace. Before you got it, what, 5 to 15, 25 to 35? 35, 35 plus is when a Van Brace would drop before. And it's like... I'm already gotten rid of my stuff if I'm a core. So a lot of people don't even have their components. And you could keep them around, but eh. So now it's a little earlier. It's in the um, 15 to 25 range. And that's when I'm, I haven't gotten rid of my Wraith Bands or something yet. And that's just better. Uh, they also moved Clumsy Net a little earlier. Just because it doesn't have great stats. It's really only the active. And it's a risky active at that. So I, I think it really needed to be there. Um, the mana region also got reduced. So it's not that great. It's okay. Uh, Mindbreaker was, uh, got its mana break reduced and only has half effect on creeps, so you aren't able to pull mana up from creeps. The magic resistance did go up by 10, though. That's pretty dramatic. It's a good item still. Timeless Relic, the debuff duration amp was reduced. Um, because it's just, it stacks too well, in my opinion. You could just, like, perma-stun people, so big deal. Spell Amp did go up, though, so this is a very good item for a lot of the, uh, interiors I play. Witless Shaco, uh, people realized the percentage was too strong. <laughs> so instead, now it's a static amount, plus 1,000 health, minus 400 mana. That's much notable, because that, that drawback is actually worse for a lot of heroes. <laughs> percentage isn't too bad <coughs> when you have a low mana pool, like a strength hero. Now that it's static, that might be half your mana pool, or more. 
So I think this is much better. Like, meaning it's a worse item, which is how it should be. Spell Prism doesn't have any active at all anymore. Instead, it now provides a 20% cooldown reduction, 12 dull stats, and 4 mana regen. Um, so they just changed the item altogether. Uh, I think cooldown reduction is really cool. I think it's a really good item. Uh, Illusionist Cape now also increases damage of your player-controlled units as well. This is this means it goes with Lycan a lot, um, because you can have the Wolves, you can have Necro Creeps, all that. So this actually becomes an okay item. This was like the crappiest item in the entire list. Now it's like, okay, it could be alright sometimes. It's still not amazing, but for a couple heroes it could be useful. The Leveler, they took away the Cleave and the Splash, and now it has 25% Demolish, which means extra building damage. Um, I would actually argue this is a better item because of it. Cleave is really good, but, like, if you want Cleave, you buy a Battle Fury. Um, anyway, now instead, you can have a way... You can pick up an item that lets you siege buildings. Tremendously so. Um, which is cool. Seer Stone, the cast range isn't as good. The vision range isn't as good, because it's just too good. Cat, 450 cast range, like, now that's nerfed, is still tremendous. Like, I, I just, you know... Mirror Shield is arguably just different. Um, I wouldn't say better or worse. So it used to have a 75% chance, and I guess you could argue for most heroes that's better. Um, than what it changed to, which is now a 4 second cooldown, so it will automatically block much like a Lincoln's and then recharge every 4 seconds, but still reflects as well. Um, the reason why this could be better or worse is someone like Anti-Mage would prefer this as it is now. Because I'm going to block for most of the time anyway. When I can't, it will 100% block the next disabled. Instead of having a chance that I get screwed. The problem is, for the 4 seconds you will be vulnerable for most heroes, meaning you just throw a couple disables on them. But I think that it's more obnoxious to know 100% the next disable will be blocked. Because then it's not even like you can get lucky to, to counter it. It's just going to do what it's going to do. Health regen of Woodland Striders went up tremendously. They heal you a tremendous amount. Like an unreasonable amount. Uh, this is one of the best times probably just because you can't die. Book of the Dead. Now they increase the cooldown, decrease the duration, uh, and fix the bug. This way you can't have them up all the time. So there is some downtime on them. Uh, Phoenix Ash no longer gives 30 doll stats at all, so they just took that away, so that's a big hit. In the Health Restore, now only gives you up to 50% health, but it does refresh your non-ultimate abilities upon triggering, making it probably better for supports, to be honest with you. And I say that because... Um, I don't know, it's questionable, I guess. I don't know. It, it gets consumed, so that's the question about a Tier 5 item that gets consumed. I'd still te I'm still tempted to say, eh? It doesn't seem as good for cores because cores usually already, like, their abilities aren't as important as support's abilities. And it doesn't full heal you, meaning you're just going to die anyway. It depends on the core. Someone like Storm or, like, uh, Puck or Quap, it'd still be good for it. And it would actually let them bust some stuff out. Otherwise, I'd put it on a support so they can get their, can get their stables off. And then, like, maybe that would win you the fight. I don't know. Anti-Mage is passive. <laughs> Wait, what? That's not what that said before. They changed it. Like, they actually changed it. This isn't what it said before, and I can promise you that, because I thought it was weird. Um, this is better. This is a fair balance. They had changed the base amount of mana break, so that instead of 28 through 64, because you can read it to the side there, um, it had gone down to, like, 20 to uh, 38 or something. I forget what it was exactly, but I 100%, I'm not crazy, that is exactly what it was. I'm actually shocked. Um, so instead they decided to leave his original mana burn alone, the static amount, and decrease the percentage. And that's probably fairer, because percentage against a lot of heavy int heroes is a little bit broken. So I'm glad to ha still have the percentage based, but make, make, maybe make it lower. That's okay. That's fine. I like that a lot better than what they had done. Because hitting the passive amount meant it was worse against all heroes who weren't int heroes, because the passive amount, up to 64, was actually more for most heroes in the game, even if they're higher levels, because their mana pool wasn't high. Crystal Maiden got a mana regen buff, which was needed because they just nerfed her Arcane Aura self. Um, Arcane Aura magic resistance was lowered by a little bit. That was needed too. It's really strong. Uh, and the regen was also lowered at all levels. Um, she needed the base mana to balance out the fact that she's getting less from her own aura, but she actually still nets less now uh, because she gets double what it says. So she used to get 5 plus 1 is 6. Now it's 4, plus 1.5 is 5.5, so she actually lost some mana. Um, so some nerfs, because she was too strong. Jar Ranger, her multi-shot cooldown was reduced at all levels. This is uh, earlier levels, which is pretty big. This multi-shot I've used in a bot game. I haven't played any real games yet, but we're going to tonight. Um, it's not super strong, but it definitely does have some power for clearing creeps. And so I think having um, it earlier might actually let you like take creeps you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. 
So I'm interested to see how that plays out. Uh, better on her aura for marksmanship, which is the agility aura, and more damage on the procs. So I think they were just kind of buffing her up because they realized reducing some of her abilities was too much for her. Spirit Fair attacked slower and lost some of its uh, talent for attacking faster, so that was needed. Morphling buffs across the board. Better int and int gain. Base strength went up. Attribute shift uh, has better stat increases uh, at all levels, meaning that he'll have just better strength and agility just from having levels in it. Uh, and his talent for agility went up. OD infinite gain went up strength and strength gain went up uh, he steals more mana uh, when he does his hits after getting alt and the alt itself does more damage razor lost agility for on is one of his talents and eye of the storm shock went down early level so he doesn't do as much damage early he's probably still good snapfire got all buffs the reason why is because her win rate is still abysmal uh i haven't seen after this but it's abysmal uh i think that she's okay okay hero she was but i'm glad to see some changes the reason why is her her disable game is low so I can understand her needing something else for her kit. Base armor by two. She has incredible base armor now, and her trading is very good because of her attack. Uh, strength gain went up by a whole one. That's, all, that's 20 health per level more. Um, and damage. One damage per thing. And some magic resistance. So that's pretty good for Snapfire. She's going to be way better in lane for trading. Fire Snap Cookie cast range was increased by 200. One of her problems is she had to be too close to use Fire Snap Cookie and often would die for it. So now it has a 200 increased range. She can more likely use it to get people out and not die in the exchange. The stun duration also went up by 0.2 to start and scales up to 0.5 more. That's a tremendous stun. This actually is a really good ability now. I very much like this ability. It's strong. Uh, little Shredder fixed damage went up at all levels. That's because it's kind of a bad ability. It just doesn't do enough damage um, on those shots. Now it's reasonable because the attack range. So it's better for harassing. If you really needed to harass the core, I would actually consider taking this kind of early because you can use it uh, every 24 seconds to do a pretty tremendous amount of damage from a far range. So this actually might be a good in-lane ability now. Uh, Mortimer's Kisses, the damage was increased pretty tremendously. Uh, 75 at max level, which is a lot. They already do a ton. Uh, the slow increased by 10%, uh, which it already has a talent that increases it more, I believe. So that's pretty tremendous. It'll slow you a lot. And they happen faster. The minimum travel time went down, and the max travel time went down, meaning that they'll never travel as long, and they can travel shorter than they ever did before, so it'll be easier to get uh, it to hit where you want. Flesh Golem uh, buffed the slow, and they buffed the strike multiplier, because he kind of needed it. Ursa got some armor, but his slow and his enrage got nerfed. Um, I think that's probably better anyway. The slow and earth shock early game was too much, so it's going to be harder for us to get early game kills, but the armor means it's... Uh, oh, the armor was reduced. Oh, I thought it was increased. So he's easier to kill in lane, he's worse at chasing you, and he needs levels before his enrage is really ready to use all the time. Base agility on Venge was reduced by 7, even though the damage is the same. Uh, the reason why is because um, they wanted to hit her attack speed and armor. Um, Vengeance Aura range got nerfed at late levels because it's too much. Uh, attributes went down at stats. Uh, they changed this. They basically switched these two talents, which do a lot for people. They'll take one, nerf it, move it up. Take one and move it back. So it, it's overall the uh, damage is nice at twenty, like versus at twenty five. But it sucks that she can't cast spells until twenty five. So that's a pretty big universal nerf for Venge. And Void Spirit, a little bit more strength gain. Uh, an Astral Step happens twice as fast, which is huge. It felt really uh, slow. And uh, the cast range went up by 100 at all levels. So that's pretty big, actually. Um, he's going to be a lot better for escaping and stuff. Because that uh, extra 100 is 100 out, and he can use it twice. So that's 200 more range. Um, okay, so perfect timing. I'm going to end this part of the stream. Everybody on YouTube, this is just going to be... Unlike the last patch review, this is going to be... It, it's going to be self-contained. There'll be another video with my Dota uh, playthrough probably right after that. Um, so... I appreciate all you on YouTube for watching. For those of you on Twitch, I'm going to take about three minutes to get, gather people together, and then we'll start playing.